Hello everyone and welcome to this new video uh, tutorial where I show you how to plan for creating geometric designs and how to um, plan for the perfect size or the right size for your um, geometric art whether you're painting or just designing or sketching uh, there's a couple of considerations that you'd need to uh, keep in mind to make sure that you actually get a good result at the end so um, let's start if I have a pattern uh, just similar to this one and uh, what I wanted to show you is this is typically the style that I like to design and, and like to apply in my paintings and um, regardless which pattern is uh, the subject or the colors or you know the the design itself uh, what I tend to do is leave a blank frame around the uh, pattern uh, painting itself so the question is how do you plan in terms of dimensions for a painting like this for me that depends on two uh, aspects the first one being whether I'm drawing on a canvas or uh, paper so in that case this would be the dimensions of my canvas so if I have a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter canvas I would actually plan for the pattern painting to be let's say 18 by 18 or 16 by 16 I think in this case I've even made it 16 by 16 centimeters so yeah um, I've got 16 centimeters by 16 centimeters over here so let's note this down uh, this is the inner dimension okay so hopefully you can see that let me try with a marker so let me try with a better marker so 16 centimeters okay and by 16 centimeters and these are the inner dimensions the outer dimensions can be let's say 20 centimeters or whatever your overall size is i think in this case in our case here it's 19 centimeters which is fine so that means that this painting will fit a 19 centimeter frame now if my canvas was 19 centimeter by 19 centimeter this would fit you know perfectly on top of that as a design if it's 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter that means that on either of the sides and uh, on the top and the bottom there will be an extra half centimeter so five millimeter there um, that's all fine I uh, hope it's not confusing, but uh, let me demonstrate to you uh, on an actual painting of mine. So um, if you see here, I've got the frame and the painting is inside uh, the frame. So um, I usually measure the inside of the frame, as I said, to make sure that I plan for the visible part of the uh, painting uh, to show through. Uh, or the visible part of the frame just to make sure that the painting th shows through properly so in this case it's 19 and a half centimeters so if i am just noting down and uh, what i'll do is i will actually take note on this piece of paper here so i want my painting to be 19.5 centimeter So this is 19 centimeters, but if I take 19.5 centimeters and let me try to demonstrate. So if I'm planning for it and I have, this is my frame. So the outside of the frame not interested much in that at the moment this is the outside this is the inside and the inside 
was 19.5 centimeter okay so now it's up to me it's my choice what do i want to uh, set as the size of the pattern inside in this visible part so if i for just for demonstration purposes shade this out and this is the inside of the frame so what i want to do is actually plan for this pattern to be visible inside the frame so i would go personally i would go for Sixteen by sixteen. So if I decide to go sixteen centimeters by sixteen centimeters, I would actually be leaving three and a half uh, centimeters, which means that it is a one point seven five. If I divide these at uh, the three and a half centimeters by two, uh, halving it, I would get. 1.75 centimeter on either of the sides 1.75 so this distance is 1.75 centimeters this distance is 1.7 centimeter 75 centimeters and this one is 1.75 centimeters as well so now i arrive with the size and I actually now know the size of my painting, which is 16 by 16 centimeters. Now on to actually planning for the repeating unit. So again, if I just put the painting away, if I, um, if I go back to my example here and I actually measure this. I think I've got it at 16 centimeters. So this one is 15. So let me get the design that I have in 16 centimeters. So this is 16 centimeters. Okay. So I'm now going to try and figure out, and I need to analyze this pattern. Um, what is the repeating unit in this pattern? And for that, I'll cover, you know, uh, the subject of that in my next videos. And I'll teach you how to analyze and find out the repeating base units and the patterns. But here I can just basically and safely say that this is a repeating unit. So if I want to go ahead and just quickly outline this part. So this is my repeating square. And in this case, if I take this square is now a symmetrical uh, reflection of it. This square is now another symmetrical reflection of this square. And this one, another symmetrical reflection of this. So I've got four squares here and 16 by four is of course uh, four centimeters so in this case i would aim to create a four centimeter by four centimeter square and that's 16 times so this repeats 16 times as you can see Hopefully it's accurate enough and you can actually see the idea. But these are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is 16 repetitions of the same base unit, basically. And just to let you know, so here is the base unit. So this is actually the base unit that we have identified. It's just magnified a bit to show you clearly. 
but this is the actual base unit that we will be drawing in each of these squares uh, to you know create the overall pattern and the tessellation as they call it um so back to this idea now that i know the dimensions of the overall pattern which is 16 centimeters by 16 centimeters i know that i want to divide the 16 centimeters by 16 centimeters into 16 equal squares i want to create a grid of four squares by four squares yeah so in order to do that and we've covered in our last video how to draw the square so in order to do that what I'll do is I'll start drawing my overall square. And let me see how I can get this in frame. Okay, and I'll put my pattern here next to me just so to have an idea. So uh, it will start with a square as we did last time so this is a bit of a repetition uh, apologies if um, you want to skip this part that's okay that's totally fine so um, this is my horizontal line this is my midpoint take my compass and I'll start with the compass marking each side arbitrarily that's not a problem uh, it doesn't matter so what i want to do now is actually open the compass to i would say probably two-thirds of this distance and i'll do an arc on the top an arc on the bottom okay and i will place my compass needle at this intersection i'll do another arc on top and on the bottom now I have constructed, remember to keep the compass pin away from you, as we said in the first video. So um, now I can construct my perpendicular line. And this is the line that cuts through my horizontal line. So now I arrive at half points. I now think about, okay, overall I need 16 by 16 centimeters. So in this case, I actually want eight centimeters on each side. Yeah. So if I take the zero mark here and I'll mark the eight centimeters. So now we gotta be careful. I gotta use my eraser to actually erase these old marks just so I don't get confused. I don't confuse myself. So that's all right. Um, what I'll do is now match the compass opening uh, to the eight centimeters and yeah, a little bit. Okay, so. I'll take a mark here. There's a mark already here. I'll take a mark at the bottom and I'll take a mark on the right. Okay. And I'll start on the right and I'll do two marks, one on the top, one on the bottom. Okay. I'll do the same here on the left. So one mark on the top, one mark at the bottom. And now on the top and bottom intersections. I'll place my needle and I will mark the left and mark the right. Save at the bottom. So I'll place my needle and the more I get careful, uh, I can do it of course slowly and more carefully uh, to avoid any errors. So here I am, I've done these steps and in this case I've got the big square. Okay. OK. 
Okay, I'm enjoying this. Enjoying these points. These intersections. To give me the overall square of the pattern. So this is where the pattern will be drawn and the whole square will be the pattern. Now I've got four squares. I need to divide them each into four squares. So uh, to get the 16 squares. So I want one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So um, in order to do that, I will go back to my compass, use my compass again. And uh, what I'll do here is again, I will place it here on this point and uh, take, let's say two thirds, take an arc on the top, use it in the middle, place it in the middle, take another arc on the top and another on the left. Now place it here. And I want to get this mark. So these intersections will help me. Again, I start, I can start here. That's fine. Just to keep it tidy and uh, to show you this. So I'll do the mark here. And then in the middle, I'll do another mark. Another mark here in the middle. And to the right, another mark. So what I've done here is actually created another perpendicular that halves these uh, squares. All I need to do is basically join them. Okay. And uh, here you go. So I've halved them into four each. Now the next bit is actually tricky because we don't have um, space here. So this is outside of our drawing. Ideally, I'd want a bigger sheet of paper uh, to carry out this design on. And um, I'll retry in another video to do that. But uh, what I can do here is actually do the same for this side. And these are the arcs that on the right hand side, on the left hand side, instead of doing them here, I'll just do them here. And uh, it's not ideal, but I'll get an accurate enough result. Okay. And this is. Again, as I said, not ideal, but you get the idea. Uh, but hopefully you get the idea. And if you have any questions, just feel free to put them in the comments section. And I'll make sure that I cover the answers in my next videos. This is... Try to line up these points. And this way you get your... 16 squares so these are your 16 squares now and uh, this is not going to be the painting of course this is just the underlying construction what i'll do is i'll start designing this pattern or the similar pattern on this uh, grid and then transfer it on transfer paper onto the paper or canvas where i actually do the painting and coloring if i like Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you want to support me, please subscribe to my YouTube channels. You can follow me on Instagram. Your support also means a lot. Uh, I'll leave a link to my website so you can see my work and uh, paintings that I create. I'm teaching all this online. I'm leaving all these uh, free resources online for free because I aim to help more people um, learn, create, uh, enjoy and relax uh, with this great art form. Uh, as always, please subscribe, hit the notification bell to get uh, to be the first to know of my future videos. And uh, please ask any questions. Um, I'm here to help you.
Thank you so much and have a nice day.